an entitled father steals my phone, destroys my property, and slaps my friend, all because we were laughing during a terrible movie, and I honestly could not be more upset by the result. Here's what happened. So this happened in 2013, when my friend and I were in our early 20s, but it's something that has been bothering me for years. I still get upset thinking about it, so I figured it's time to get it off my chest. My best friend Zane invited me to go out one day to a sushi bar near the waterfront where I live. After dinner, we stopped by a movie theater to see The Last Exorcism 2. Now I gotta tell you, it was not a good movie. I usually enjoy good horror movies, and I like the first one enough to go see the sequel, but I was not expecting it to be as silly as it was. This will be important later. I don't remember where we were in the movie theater, since due to this incident, I decided to never watch it again. We could not have been more than 40 or so minutes into it, and Zane and I were sitting in the front row of elevated seats, because I like to put my feet up on the metal bar and not have to worry about someone's head being in my way. This preference would turn out to be, though, a big mistake. Silly stuff was happening in this movie. People were talking in goofy voices, the makeup and the effects were weird, and it was really hard to take it seriously. Zane, being the goofball that they are, kept whispering jokes about the movie and shaking with laughter, which caused the metal bar our feet were on to shake just a little bit. The theater was not very crowded. There were only about a dozen or so people aside from us, and I didn't think we were being loud enough to be disruptive, since we try not to be those kind of people. After some random nonsense happened in the movie, we, alongside a few other people in the seats behind us, burst into laughter for a brief second. We were trying to be quiet, but it was so bad it was funny. I distinctly remember the girl behind me saying to her boyfriend, who the heck writes this stuff, while she was laughing uncontrollably. Suddenly, an older man who was sitting with his wife and daughter on the far side of our aisle gets up and starts walking down the aisle towards us. We assumed he was just going to the bathroom or something like that, so we pulled our legs back so he could get by, but he stopped right in front of us and stared down at me. Before I could really say anything to him, he says quite loudly, you need to shut up. And when he said that, I was really taken back, but I began to try to apologize. Zane also chimed in saying, hey, we're sorry, we'll keep it down. We didn't mean to disturb you, we're really sorry. But this guy, who was probably in his late 50s, just starts talking over us. He says, my wife and my daughter are trying to enjoy this movie. We came to see a scary movie, not a comedy. We came to be scared, not to laugh. You need to stop laughing and stop kicking this stupid bar. Again, I tried to apologize, but he was still talking. Zane then says to this guy, hey, look, you're right. We're sorry. We're being too loud. We'll keep it down. But this entitled father just was not having it because he cuts them off and says, don't keep it down. Keep it shut. It's not a comedy movie. At this point, he's almost yelling, and the girl behind us chimes in as well, and says, they're allowed to laugh, dude. It's a movie. Zane looks at the guy and says, sir, she's right. It's a movie. We're allowed to laugh if we want to. The man then reaches down and slaps Zane across the face, and says, don't you dare talk back to me. At this point, I'm upset, and I'm a little scared, because Zane hates being touched, and the only thought going through my head is to not let Zane hit this old man. Don't let them take a swing. I don't want to end up in jail. So I immediately put a hand on Zane's shoulder to try and hold them back. Zane, to their credit, didn't react at first. After a moment, they said, Sir, do not slap me. You need to apologize right now. To which the man then slaps them again and repeats, Do not talk back to me. Zane bolts up and I immediately stand as well, putting myself between them and this crazy entitled jerk. I pull out my phone, which was only one week old at the time and was a birthday gift from my mother. I look at him and I say, all right, dude, I'm calling the police because I'm pretty sure that's assault. But as I start to dial 911, this guy grabs the phone out of my hands and holds it out of reach saying, you're not calling anyone. Now sit down and apologize to me, my wife, and my daughter. The next part is a bit of a blur. I'm not good with confrontations and I get very shaky when people yell at me. I remember that my ears started ringing and I got very panicked and I asked for my phone back. But he said something else and reached to slap Zane again. I tried to stop him, but he did something that I don't remember. I reached for my phone again, and he threw it towards the front of the theater, and I heard it crack into something or someone. I vaguely remember someone in the seat behind me, reaching towards the guy, and someone else was yelling at him as well. But it was all a blur, and I'm honestly not sure who said or did what. I don't know why, but I just jumped over the railing and ran out of the theater into the hall, yelling for security, and for someone to call the police, because a crazy old man was attacking people.
people. I found someone who worked there near the counter, and they came back into the theater with me. I genuinely don't remember much of what happened next, but I do remember that the staff came into the theater, people in other seats were yelling at the man, and the police eventually came in and removed the man from the theater. The movie never stopped rolling, by the way, but a staff member turned the lights on and helped me find my phone, which was completely shattered. Then he turned the lights back off, and he and a cop near the door led me and Zane out of the theater. I remember passing by the old man and his family, and I yelled at the cops that I wanted to press charges for assault and property damage, and that I wanted him arrested. The cop led me away to the counter down the hall and took our statements, but I don't even remember what I told him. Now this part is what really upsets me every single time that I think about it. I wanted to press charges, and I asked where the man was. The cop stepped away and radioed someone. Then, a few minutes later, he came back and told me that the man had left. I'm not sure if they just let him go or what, but that's how he worded it. Uh, that man and his family left, sir. I told him to find the guy and that we wanted to press charges, but the cop just looked at me and told me that they didn't have the man's information, and I remember being so upset by this. Zane and I got a refund from the theater, and I used their phone to call my mom and let her know that my new phone had been destroyed. Honestly, the rest of the day was just ruined, as I was so upset that the cops just let that man walk away after all that he did to me and my friend. To this day, I still get upset thinking about it, and I hope wherever that guy is, I hope karma eventually catches up to him, and he gets exactly what he deserves. How awful of a police officer do you have to be to let someone leave who assaulted another person and destroyed someone else's property? Like, there is obvious witnesses as well as property damage that can be shown that they easily could have documented, but instead they just let this guy go? Like, that is absolutely insane to me, and so unbelievably unacceptable. That just does not fly with me. I mean, who's gonna pay for that phone? As well as the fact that this friend got assaulted by some old man at the movie theater, and nobody did anything about it? That is all just so unbelievable to me, and that really sucks. So for the sake of the original poster, I really do hope that this old man gets exactly what's coming to him, because treating someone like this is absolutely unacceptable, and no one has any right to act like that or to assault anyone over a movie. An entitled Karen goes nuts on me, blaming me for her kid wandering through traffic, even though she was never watching her kid and he easily could have gotten hurt. Here's what happened. So last Friday, I had an encounter with an entitled Karen on Veterans Day. On that day, I went to the gym at the time I usually do, which evidently was a big mistake, as I didn't even make it into the door before getting ambushed and yelled at by a wild Karen with a sense of entitlement that boggles my mind. Here's what happened. I pulled into the parking lot to find the place absolutely overrun, which, while sometimes is annoying, is usually just fine. I just get in and get out as fast as I can. Except on Friday, I couldn't even get into the place cleanly. I'm in the parking lot, doing the slow patrol path, trying to locate a parking spot that doesn't require a trip on a monorail to get to and from the place that I'm trying to park. While I'm looking, I find a boy of about 8 years old wandering in the driving part of the parking lot, looking down at a mobile device of some sort. He's just slowly zigzagging towards the building, evidently oblivious of my electric vehicle or anything other than what he's staring at. It was cute for the first minute. Then I got bored. And when I get bored, I get mischievous. So I rolled down my windows and I hit the hot key on my car that gives out a whoopee cushion noise. Because of course, that's added to my hot bar. While the car is rolling, you can't use exterior speakers anymore. And I have my volume set to reasonable human levels. I may be immature, but I do enjoy my sense of hearing. So the boy didn't get blasted by a sonic barrage, just a very clearly heard noise of someone ripping a fart. The kid jumps up, does a 180, and then the waterworks start to flow, and he skitters off to find whichever parent or guardian let him wander into traffic in the first place. I chuckled to myself because again, I never claimed I was an adult. I just happened to look like one. I located a parking spot successfully, already mostly forgetting the encounter with the boy, and it's honestly a shame that I didn't forget it longer, because what happened next was very annoying. There was a very irate, entitled Karen with a still sniffling little boy waiting for me at the doors of the gym. And this was only a one-way-in, one-way-out situation, sadly. This entitled Karen was fired up, furious at me for startling her precious little angel, which is actually insane because her stupid kid was meandering through traffic. She then tried to blame me for driving a car that wasn't normal, and that if he had known I was there, he would have moved out of the way. She said, your car is too silent. You can't blame him for not knowing you were there, while also trying to claim that he wasn't blatantly 
constantly walking in traffic, despite the fact that she was not only there, and I saw the whole thing happen in front of me. At this point, I gave up on logic and reason, and I told her to just have a great day in the fakest and most insincere tone I could muster, and I held the door open for her, gesturing her to go in first. She gave me a sneer and used the other set of doors. Then she ruined what little impact the sneer had when she had to run back and grab her child's arm because guess what? He was once again completely engrossed in his phone and oblivious to whatever was going on around him. And it was at that moment that I realized that this woman was just a terrible mother, especially when the lady who worked the front desk rolled her eyes at this lady, clearly recognizing that she is a massive problem for her and everybody else at this establishment. So hopefully next time she can keep an eye on her kid. That way he won't wander through traffic. What a terrible parent. I mean, I personally don't care if kids have phones, but if they're not aware of their surroundings, that kid very easily could have gotten hit by a car. And the fact that it's a smart car or an electric car, whatever you want to call it, and it doesn't make that much noise is not anybody's fault except for that stupid kid not watching where he's going. Also, where the heck were the parents in this situation? I mean, this entitled Karen literally was blaming this guy for something that she should have been more aware of. If she had just been watching her kid in the first place, this literally would not have been a problem. And for this entitled Karen to blame this guy's car as the real problem in this situation proves to me entirely that this lady is so out of touch and she is just legitimately and entirely a terrible parent. An entitled principal steals from a child, taking a precious family heirloom and then destroying it. So as a result, this kid's parents took this guy to court and won, suing him completely for ruining this family heirloom. Here's what happened. So when I was a kid, I had this whistle I got from my grandparents after they passed away. And I loved that whistle so much. I wore it around my neck all the time. But even though it was broken and it didn't make a sound, I thought it looked cool and I really liked it. One day, the principal saw that I was wearing a whistle around my neck and demanded that I give it to him so I didn't disturb class and other students with it. But as it was getting taken away from me, I tried to explain to him that no, it's broken, it doesn't work. But he didn't care and he took it anyways. At the end of the day, I told my parents what happened and they were very, very angry. They drove me to the school again and demanded to see the principal. And after an hour of waiting, he showed up and my parents demanded the whistle back. He then denied ever taking anything from me, but they called him out on his garbage and demanded it back or they would sue the school for inheritance theft. At the time, I didn't know what that meant, but it didn't matter because the principal made a groaning noise and went back to his office to go retrieve the whistle that he definitely took from me. When he gave it back to me, I broke down crying. The whistle was flattened, like someone had put something heavy on top of it. It was completely broken and it fell apart in my hands when it was given back to me. And when my parents saw this, they were absolutely livid. And as a result, they began the process of suing him for theft and destruction of property. The principal's lawyer met with my parents and they asked to settle out of court for the cost to replace or repair the whistle. And after some back and forth, they eventually got money from them out of court. The whistle, unfortunately, was broke beyond repair. But my uncle, who was a blacksmith as a hobby, said that he could melt the metal down to recreate the whistle. He said that he doesn't know if it would work, but at least it would be made of the exact same metal, just like the one that that stupid principal had destroyed. My parents agreed, and he melted down the broken metal and used some of the compensation metal for some extra materials to make sure he could make the new whistle. Maybe eight or nine days later, he came to me and gave me the whistle. I was so happy and didn't stop giving him the biggest hug. The whistle still did not work, but that didn't matter. I was happy and I was glad just to have the whistle back from my grandparents. What an awful principle. I cannot stand adults like that who grow up to go into childcare of some kind just to then be a giant bully to children. It's completely unfair and it's absolutely inexcusable. I mean, this principal literally took this whistle and then tried to deny that he ever took it in the first place. I mean, what kind of piece of garbage would do that? And worst of all, he destroyed it when he got back. And that, in my opinion, is a true sign of his real character. So I would personally be very curious to hear if the school board heard about this. Because honestly, this school should not be run by a giant bully like this. And those kids going to that school deserve so much better. My best friend told my boyfriend she keeps dreaming about kissing him. And I honestly don't know what to do. So I am a 25 year old female and my boyfriend is 23 and honestly all of this is just so pathetic and the title says it all I really don't know if I should feel upset by it but I really do I do not give a crap that she dreamt about it it's the fact that she decided to tell my boyfriend that is really just
just so disturbing. I find it really inappropriate that she decided to say, Brad, I keep having dreams about kissing you. I do not understand. I mean, what was she expecting him to say back to her? She also told him when I had left to go home. So I wasn't even there to hear the conversation. Now, my best friend's boyfriend also told me he had to sit there for an hour while she told him about her eating disorder. So instead of talking to her own boyfriend about it, she decided to confide in mine, which is fine. They are friends after all, but it really seems like she prefers the advice and support that my boyfriend gives her as opposed to her own. And on top of that, she has a boyfriend that she lives with. I would never ever tell someone else's boyfriend that I had a dream about kissing them. Even if I did, I would keep that stuff to myself. I know it's a stupid dream and dreams don't mean anything, but it's the fact that she told him that really bothers me. And also as a side note, she is kind of always like this when she's drunk. It's not the first time she's been close with my boyfriend when she's been drunk. And these types of interactions have upset me in the past before. I just don't understand why she does it. She is apparently very much in a happy relationship with her boyfriend. Or so I would assume when I confronted her about what she said and told her that I think it's inappropriate to be telling my boyfriend that she keeps dreaming of kissing him. She simply said that she doesn't think it's a big deal and started being extremely nasty and used deeply personal insults towards me. She also then told me that she finds my boyfriend extremely unattractive. I just don't know what to do. I feel really confused by her actions. I don't know if I should just cut her off or if I should carry on still with this friendship. It's all such a strange mess and I really don't know what to do. I have to agree with the original poster here. Someone going up to someone else's significant other and saying, oh my gosh, I've had dreams about kissing you is incredibly inappropriate considering this supposed friend has a boyfriend of their own. Like that's just weird. How do you think they must have felt in that situation? Hearing their girlfriend confess to kissing someone else, even if it was just in a dream, that's just weird. So I don't blame you for finding this weird. And if I was in your shoes, I would feel very disrespected as well. That's just a line that in my opinion, you don't cross. And it also kind of seems like she wants your boyfriend. Like anytime she's drunk, she's always very flirty and very close with your boyfriend. And she's also confiding in him instead of her own boyfriend about her thoughts and some of the problems going on in her life. Even if your boyfriend gives out the best advice known to man, that's still incredibly inappropriate. And in my opinion, that's just not okay. I mean, just look at how she reacted when you confronted her about coming on to your boyfriend, basically. She turned into an absolute snake. She used really hurtful insults and she used deeply personal things against you. I mean, that's a giant red flag in my opinion. I mean, she clearly has some kind of defensive reaction towards you saying, hey, stay away from my boyfriend and stop telling him you want to kiss him in your dreams, which is basically what she did. So if anything, I would really keep my guard up with this lady because I think she has ulterior motives. And if it's kept unchecked, then this really could become a really weird situation for you as well as your boyfriend. My family is already being over dramatic right on time for Thanksgiving. And I honestly don't know what to do. So my brother is hosting Thanksgiving in his new house that is also close to my in-laws. In a group text message with my parents, he asked me and my husband what day we might visit my in-laws. I said we weren't sure, but probably Friday or Saturday. My mother then proceeds to call my brother and chew him out, saying that this is their holiday and we should be spending our time with them. My brother called to warn me that I might be getting an angry phone call pretty soon. My parents up until recently have always been very hardworking, empathetic, and wonderful people. Everything shifted though in early 2020. My dad had a routine surgery, which turned disastrous when he had a heart attack on the operating table and nearly passed away. He was in the ICU for two weeks, where we didn't know if he was going to survive or not. Thankfully, he pulled through. But then at the end of 2020, my uncle passed away after a long battle with cancer. In fact, my mother was in the room when that happened. Compounded with the stress from COVID, it made them incredibly clingy with my brother and I. She was constantly begging us to visit them when they live a three-hour drive away. I tried to visit as much as I could, but I finally drew a line in the sand when my sister-in-law got pregnant. She was due two weeks before Christmas, and my parents were flabbergasted that we wanted to spend Christmas together with our new niece instead of all of us driving three hours with a newborn baby just to see them. I told my parents we were not going to their house and that they better get off their butts to visit their first grandchild on her first Christmas. Thankfully, they saw reason and stayed with us for Christmas, but their clinginess only got worse and they still didn't understand why all of us still didn't want to come to their house. I'm about at my wit's end with this. I need them to deal with their garbage. I have told my 
husband. If my mom calls, I'm not answering until I'm less upset. But I have no clue what to say to her once she calls. And I don't want to make Thanksgiving awkward, especially for my brother and sister-in-law in their new home. What should I do? I think in situations like this, you need to do what's best for you and your family. So if you don't want to go there just to spend Thanksgiving with them or whatever else is going on, then you need to explain that to them in detail and say, hey, this is just not going to happen. I mean, they are literally three hours away. This is not a simple trip down the road. This is going to take time and a lot of energy to get there. So your hesitation is completely understandable. And on top of that, they're just acting really weird. So hopefully that conversation goes well because family drama around the holidays is definitely one of the worst parts about it. And I just don't think you or your family deserve to be treated this way. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.